want to play this clip and go to Lou Rockwell because this is like this is like uh, nails on a chalkboard. I know this is like nails on a chalkboard uh, for Lou Rockwell uh, out there. This is Obama at Ohio State yesterday doubling down on his you didn't build it statement and saying we don't need people saying, you know, these people that say government can become a tyranny and, and, and always worrying about a tyranny that's about to come around the corner. No, no, it's already here. Tyranny's already here. They're on CNN saying we listened to all your phone calls and it's for your own safety. We have that clip coming up. They've gone from denying it to admitting it and saying it's bad to now saying you're lucky we care enough to listen to everything you do. You're lucky we put the CIA bomber on the CIA payroll, Tamerlan. That's, that's confirmed. You're lucky we, we, we had martial law in Boston. We're going to talk about it all with Lou Rockwell, play a clip of Ron Paul's speech in Chile and more. But the good news is this show's getting more popular. LouRockwell.com's getting more popular. Ron Paul's a rock star worldwide. I'm very popular worldwide. The, the anti-New World Order Libertarian Party, uh, UKIP, only a decade or so old, has exploded and has won the major elections uh, over in uh, England. But the enemy is going to counter strike back. They're now saying we're basically terrorists in the news. Anybody that wants liberty, why, well, that's the new terror threat. Think of that. That convicts them right there. That shows they're wild authoritarians. But here is the Obama clip, and then we'll get Lou Rockwell's take on it. From This is from Ohio State yesterday. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. Some of these same voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. You should reject these voices. Uh, Lou Rockwell, founder of the Von Mies Institute, Ron Paul's former chief of staff, one of the leading intellectuals for liberty out there worldwide. What he's doing there, I want to get your take on this, is clearly recasting it that if we vote for big government, that, that, that that's America empowering government and that America is government. And he's telling the young people, you're part of that larger collective. I mean, this is direct Mao Zedong paraphrasing quotes for those that don't know. I, I knew I recognized it yesterday and it just clicked. That those, those are Mao, basically Mao quotes. Seven of his czars have quoted Mao. Lou Rockwell, what does it say about where we are that they are now this brazen, sir? Well, you know, I, I actually think, Alex, this is good news. I mean, they're actually worried about people like us. So he's, you know, if there's one thing, if you want to get young people, I'm talking about smart um, intellectually curious on people, not the younger equivalent of the sheeple, but smart young people, if you want to get them interested in something, tell them, don't read that, don't listen to that, pay no attention to that. So what is the, of course, the first thing they do is they want to find out, what am I being told not to look at? So Obama is talking about, he's talking about libertarians, anarcho-capitalists, people who correctly point out that the government is mankind's greatest enemy on earth, uh, that it is the predator, that it uh, brings about all these wars, that it takes all our money, that it spies on us, that it uh, puts us in prison camps. And, um, you know, the U.S., of course, the world capital of uh, putting innocent people in prison far more than any other country on earth. We can just go right down the list. Of course, the U.S. is a tyranny. The government is a tyranny. Still, the American people, or certainly enough of the American people, are still devoted to liberty, don't want to be run by the government, don't want to have their phone call spied on by the CIA and their emails and their texts and every other communication. So I think there's more and more opposition, even though it, this, is a, these, this is a very difficult era to be living in for people who believe in liberty. But I think that liberty is so creative, the government is so stupid, that uh, I'm very optimistic about the future, especially about the young people. And I'll bet you anything, there are a lot of those kids at Ohio State who listen to Obama, who today are looking up people like us. So I think he made a mistake. Uh, it's, but again, it shows, of course, his heart. It shows where he is. It shows the danger of, frankly, mass democracy, which has led to some of the biggest, worst governments ever. Hitler, of course, was elected. And uh, many, many bad governments, why we've had uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe writes about this in his great book, Democracy, the God that Failed, about why the worst wars ever 
have come about under democracy. And the public the is so ignorant. ever sure. come about under democracy. Sure, some new listeners are, are ignorant to the fact that w w when we badmouth democracy, they think we want authoritarianism. Will you briefly explain the difference between a republic and a democracy, sir? Well, a, a, a democracy is an unlimited government that uh, where people believe that if you can get the majority to vote one way, and of course it's never the majority, all these elections are decided by minorities and sometimes small minorities. But if an election, if people, people in an election decide for anything, it's legitimate. Well, of course that's not true. People, you know, if people can decide to take somebody else's property through, through a de democratic election, that's not legitimate. They can decide to start a war. They can decide to bring on uh, a much bigger govern uh, government under, say, Bush or under Obama, the two sides of the same rotten coin. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean self-government. Well, we believe in a self-government. Uh, so sometimes in American history, traditionally you have, yes, people voting in local elections and that sort of thing. But that's not the same as a mass national democracy uh, where you have a mass national uh, media running things for the government where, the whole th where we're given no choice where it's, you know, creep A is versus creep B. That's American democracy. That's right. They finance two fake choices that are really the same flavor of, of cyanide-filled Kool-Aid and then ram it through. The Republic puts absolute blocks in. You can't take the guns. You can't make somebody a slave. Then they argue, well, there were slaves. But it was the proper interpretation of the Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, and Constitution that ended up banning it. The media, you know, they put the original Constitution, as you know, to ban slavery, but they couldn't get it through then. It took more time, but it was the idea that was finally implemented. And again, the Bill of Rights doesn't give you your rights, folks. The Constitution doesn't. It points out what's already there organic. Lou Rockwell of LouRockwell.com is our guest. I want to come back and get into the serious situation and so much more. ProPure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here back live. You know what excites me about people like Lou Rockwell, Ron Paul, but also so many other people out there, especially young people? Everybody's starting their own radio shows, their own news shows. Uh, uh, we post and link to the uh, uh, reports that Lou Rockwell and his crew are putting out. They're becoming very popular. All of us have to just engage the globalist, engage the corporate kleptocrats that use big government to control markets and shut down their competition and domesticate people. Now, the next segment's a long segment. I want to get into gold, Syria, where he sees the world going, where he sees the Republican Party going. Is there any opposition within that system? Where does Lou Rockwell see the future going in specifics? Because he is a uh, very astute political mind. But uh, first, here is an MSNBC host, uh, Perry. I uh, remember a month ago, she came out and said, your children belong to everybody. 
and, and they're selling this idea to where now in Austin, people come up to us and say we shouldn't have three kids in Whole Foods. They're telling their forces, get aggressive. Obama's telling his anti-gun forces, get aggressive. Go out and get in people's faces. See, they need grassroots support. And, 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 and they're definitely becoming more authoritarian. They've set up this uh, Secure Corps, AmeriCorps, Stasi force. Uh, I'm, I'm, they're announcing they're spying on everybody and saying, if someone says they hate the government, call the police on them. I mean, th these, that's why I start ranting. These are dangerous creeps. Uh, I mean, this is so unprecedented. W again, why are they doubling down? Why does the FBI come out at the Boston bombing and say, don't look at other evidence, don't look at other photos of clearly a drill happening? I, I mean, I think they are losing touch. Lou Rockwell. You know, first of all, this woman is lying. I guess like every phrase out of her mouth is a lie because they don't actually believe that uh, your children or my children belong to the community. They believe they belong to the government. They don't believe they belong to our next door neighbors or, or the people in the town we live in. They believe they belong to the government. And indeed, our children have belonged to the government, according to the so-called law, for a very long time. If That's the right. Child Protective Services or some uh, family court judge or whatever can decide to take away your children on a whim. So yes, your children don't belong to you as far as the government is concerned. Of course, as far as God is concerned, as far as human nature is concerned, of course children belong to their parents. Of course children don't belong to the quote-unquote community, let alone to the rapacious and predatory government. But this is a totalitarian meme. This is, you know, they're pushing totalitarianism right across the board. And when I, when I can stomach watching MSNBC, which is not very often, I notice that these advertisements that they show are the most totalitarian things they have on there. I mean, they're just openly Soviet-like. And uh, so we need to know the enemy. Well, that's my question. This that's sort of my thing. question yeah. is, is why, for those that don't know history, this is direct Soviet. I mean, this is the stuff. Yeah. In fact, I mean, even the Soviet Union wasn't that over the top. And a lot even of Even Hitler didn't say that the children belong to the government. But, of course, the Soviets did. But so, so why are they, like, going haywire in an orgy of government worship? Well, they, they feel this is the time to push. And I think part of the reason is they feel they're making progress under Obama and they made progress under Bush, but they also are worried. They're also scared. This is why they're saying things that are actually crazy, too, a little too revealing of their, of their real agenda. So this is good for us. It's good that this woman is making this kind of a statement. As you know, thanks to you and others, it went around the whole World Wide Web. Uh, so this is good. It's good that we know that these people have these kinds of ideas and, the, and what they want to put in effect through, of course, the government, which Obama praises as, you know, the great uh, uh, locus of progress. It's actually the locus of violence. It's the headquarters of violence in society. Look at North Korea. Well, or look at the U.S. We don't have to go to North Korea. We don't have to go to the other bad countries. There are plenty of bad countries in the world. Let's, con you know, concentrate on our own country, as you do. Let's look at what the U.S. government is doing to us, what the U.S. government is planning to do to us. I mean, North Korea is not trying to read my emails. <laughs> but Obama, Absolutely. America, uh, the globalists that run America, is the monkey on our back. They keep talking, you know, of course they talk about North Korea, North Korea, North Korea, and then it drops. So it's sort of gone away, and I guess it'll come back again. North Korea is not the problem for us. No, no, I yes, agree North with you. Korea I'm just back. saying yeah. if Obama loves a total state, look at North Korea where they can't even manufacture their own cars. Everywhere government becomes total, everything collapses into right. the dark ages. Yeah, I think, I think that maybe they've... Who knows? Maybe they've learned from the experience of the Soviet Union or the experience of the other communist countries or North Korea or whatever, that the, the power elite, the oligarchs, are not well off enough in that kind of a system. So they actually want a fascist system. The U.S. system is fascist. They want to increase the fascism. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. 
I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Thank you so much for joining us on XM 166. I'm told in two days it, uh, the channel changes. In fact, pull up that email for me. I want to give the channel out right. It's, it's 244, right, John? Yeah, it's, it, it's a 244. That changes in a couple days from uh, 166. The entire channel uh, is uh, moving over there, not just our broadcast. Again, Lou Rockwell is our guest. I'm going back to him in a moment. I want to ask him about Boston and the new idea. In fact, I sent you an IM this morning, guys. Do you have it? Uh, I sent you the text uh, of what somebody said about this is how the professionals, you know, keep us safe. Will you guys print me that off the instant message I sent you, uh, Chris? Uh, because I want to read that on air later where the, where the guy's like, this is how professionals keep you safe. Come into every house, grabbing your wife by the hair, shoving you down the stairs, pointing guns at you where you're all suspects. Any of them could have been accomplices. Well, the cops could have been accomplices. Oh, but I'm not supposed to say that even though government has a history nine times out of ten of being behind the terror attack. But that's a separate issue. Uh, now, now, Lou, I want you to walk through. You've got the communist and, 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 and socialist models. But what I see us having is a corporatist model. As Mussolini said, that's the definition of fascism. You correctly peg it. So as the head of the Von Mies Institute and a man who studied history, I see them using socialism grassroots to socialize one sector of society and then play it off against the free market sector that is parasited to death at over 50%. And France is over 80. But I see them segueing where they're just exempt from our laws overseas. The mega corporations get the lion's share of the taxpayer money and bailouts and government contracts. So it's almost like socialism and communism grassroots with a police state with offshore fascist exempt above it. So it's even worse than fascism. What would you call this system they're establishing? I mean, I agree it's more akin to fascism, but... But, uh, but, I mean, what do we really call it? Well, I think, you know, Alex, you're right. It's a, it's, a, it's a corporatist system. And we just have to look at Obamacare. Unlike, say, the system in Britain or France or other countries where the state directly owns or Canada directly owns and runs the medical system, which, of course, is horrendous, uh, we have a fascist system. So you had the actual Obamacare bill written by the big insurance companies, by the big hospitals, and especially by big pharma, run for their benefit. So it's the big corporations, big government in alliance against the rest of us as, as vic tax victims and victims otherwise. So I think that is the model. And I think that whether we look at the national security state, which is all these big uh, companies who are in, uh, involved with the government in surveilling us, whether we look at the military industrial complex, any other aspect, it's it, what Mussolini said, the, the combination of corporatism and the state uh, means means fascism. So I think that is... I think that's the American system. Uh, began really with Franklin Roosevelt, whose New Deal was based on Mussolini's economic program. And it's gotten worse ever since. And of course, especially since 9-11, it's been galloping worse. So I still think, though, that most people, whether they're in Boston or otherwise, are sheeple. It's too bad. Wish it weren't the case. But everything is done by minorities for both good and for evil. So all we don't need the majority. The majority is just go along to get along. Uh, but there are uh, uh, minorities who are for, of course, this state and making everything worse. There are people who are openly for a totalitarian state. I mean, for something uh, equivalent to Mussolini or Hitler or, or uh, Stalin or uh, th those sorts of systems, they would use different words, they use different rhetoric, um, Mao Zedong, as you're saying, and so, but they don't, they don't, of course, ever use the, 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 the direct rhetoric of those regimes, but that's the sort of thing they'd like. And then there are people who oppose that, who are knowledgeable, who understand what's happening, who read, who think independently, who don't let their opinions be controlled by Fox News or CNN or MSNBC or the rest of the uh, Pravdas of this current regime or the Fokusha Beobachters or whatever. They don't let their minds be controlled by that. They think independently and they think critically. They teach their children to do the same. This is the hope of America. Indeed, it's the hope of the world that in other countries, too, there are people like this. So I think more and more people, young people especially, Ron Paul is the main reason for this, has woken up young people in this country and all over the world to, to the problems we face. So I think it's a race 
This has been the race, by the way, since uh, the Garden of Eden, or so shortly after the Garden of Eden, between those who want power uh, for the violence prone and the, uh, the killers, and those who want the power to be with the families, with individuals, with communities and businesses, and peaceful activities, with the arts of peace, uh, as versus the arts of war. Uh, That's right, Jefferson successful, Clinton. smart people can't, uh, you know, keep people away and have so many friends and so many opportunities that you tend to just become solitary. Whereas losers crave and enjoy abuse of power that for someone who's powerful uh, is nauseating. I mean, I mean, seeing people exercise undue power and abuse people is abhorrent to a normal person. That's right. But the problem you is don't. we don't we don't lust after power. So we always end up under scum. No, we don't want to. We don't want to run the next door neighbor. We're not to run the next door town or the next country or whatever. But of course, there are people who lust to kill, lust to rule. They enjoy sending young men out to kill and be killed. They get a charge out of it. Those are the people who tend to rise in government, and of course, they're they're the scum of the earth. So they're our enemies. They are the parasites, as Obama indir indirectly described them, who are just a pure cost to the human race. They're not a benefit. They're a pure cost. And those of us who understand that, who oppose it, not with violence, because of course they've got all the guns and the tanks and the bombs and the sarin gas and, and the uh, biological warfare and so forth, that's the government. So we, op we oppose them with our minds by refusing to consent, by educating ourselves, by uh, finding others who agree with us, trying to persuade others. And in fact, the more we know, the more people will come to us for an explanation sure. of what the heck is going on and what to do about it. Let me ask you this before we get into Syria, and then we're going to have open phones the next hour after Lou leaves us, listeners. Uh, in your gut, looking at the geopolitical moves, what's happening, seeing the accelerated degeneration of the Western elite, uh, where they're even cutting each other's throats politically, uh, the establishment's becoming more delusional, uh, you know, which you see uh, in the bottom of a decadent phase, what do you expect to see happening? Because I have an article right here out of Rolling Stone from last week. Everything is rigged. The biggest price-fixing scandal ever. The Illuminati were amateurs. The second huge financial scandal of the year reveals the real international conspiracy. There's no price uh, the banks can't fix. And it goes into how the stocks, the bonds, the health care, the interest rates, everything is fixed by... 16 too big to fail banks. It's really about six mega banks that set the precedent. And then it just goes, he goes, I apologize, the conspiracy theorist. You're correct. Well, and it's a 14 page article. Well, I, I mean, you see articles about people colluding to rob a bank. That's a conspiracy. The idea that big organized business isn't in a conspiracy with government throughout history, isn't the greatest danger throughout history. You ignore that at your folly, but it's not just this article. I've seen. Let's not exaggerate, 15, 20, a whole bunch of articles the last week with big prestigious writers coming out and going, okay, it's true, big mega rich really do run things and they got their money by stealing it. Uh, I, I, I mean, I was talking to a, a, a reporter just the other day and you know, he didn't even know that Glenn Beck and Obama had supported the banker bailout in, in 08. I mean, this level of ignorance, what happens when the corruption gets so naked so brazen that they say Mao Zedong is our hero and parents aren't parents and veterans are terrorists and, and, and Christians can't talk about Jesus at a commencement or in the military. I mean, this is getting so twilight zone, Lou Rockwell, of lourockwell.com that I can't believe it. How much more nuts is it going to get and what is the method? So, and, and, and out of that, where is this going? Then Syria. Well, here's, here's what they face. It's true that the big banks are running everything. We live in a bankocracy in, in Europe and in, and in Asia, too. Uh, big banks are extremely powerful. I want to recommend a great essay that's free online, Murray Rothbard's Banks, Wall Street, and American Foreign Policy. Just put that into Google, and it will come up. It re really explains how these various power elites operate. But they run up against the laws of reality because there are certain things they're doing uh, that have an economic impact, <clears throat> no matter what they hope or think, or no matter how many people they fool, the kind of money printing that is going on will bring them down. Now, of course, it's going to hurt us too, but it will bring them down. What they're doing cannot continue. The laws of reality will prevent it. So therefore, I think 
they are coming down. The big banks, the whole financial system, because of the things they're doing, uh, Bernanke can't actually change the laws of reality. He can't change the, law of the laws of economics. They apply to him just like they apply to all of us. So the banks are all, of course, fractional reserve. The money's not there, folks. Just not only the people in Cyprus whose money isn't there, your money isn't in the bank either. So the more people understand this, take their money out, try to avoid dealing with the banks, try to uh, have private uh, you know, cash uh, uses for their money and so forth. They hate ATMs, for example. They don't like you taking cash out and using it in everyday transactions. Sure. You're just supposed to do, use checks and digital transfers. So, but they can't, they can't stand against the laws of economics and reality. So I would say in the long term, not the short term, but in the long term, we have every reason to be optimistic. I agree with you. Let me um, raise this point. Um, Syria, the la la land level of the government buying 2 billion, 200 million bullets, admitting it's for us in their own army documents that we've shown. Uh, thousand, now it's over 7,000 anti mine, giant black armored vehicles I see driving around Austin. Their response is it doesn't exist. Alex Jones is insane. Now there's congressional hearings. Uh, they're freaking out, still saying, Alex Jones, he's nuts. It's his fault. I mean, articles every day, as if I have something to do with it. Sure, we broke it and forced it out there with Matt Drudge of DrudgeReport.com. But then, and you say, what does it have to do with Syria? Then you've got them saying, we've got to invade Syria because Al Qaeda might get chemical weapons when our government in NATO two years ago began inserting Al Qaeda in to commit war crimes. And then they call Obama a peacenik. I mean, it's, it's reaching la-la level. What do you make of Israel now going into day two, day three uh, of, of blowing up military barracks? And then our media is like, how dare Syria? They're so violent. I mean, I mean, it really is entering a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs level. No, I, I've noticed any number of stories saying, how dare Syria say this is an act of war? How dare they say that? So when, when, when Israel bombs them, so let's look at what Syria is. I'm not defending the government of Syria any more than I defend any other government, but it's the last secular Arab government in the world. They, it's not Islamicist. They don't have any Al Qaeda types of there. So what does the U.S., Turkey, Israel, France, and Britain do? They create a, uh, uh, a group of rebels uh, in Turkey at the various U.S. Air Force bases in Turkey, as uh, Sibel Edmonds points out. They're put into Syria. They're armed by the by the U.S. and and its and its cohorts. Probably they were given sarin gas because the sarin gas that was used, as even a UN official said today, was used by the rebels apparently, not by, not by, uh, uh, by the Syrian government. Uh, this group is all Al Qaeda types, which the U.S. has always used Al Qaeda. It used it as, against the Russians in Afghanistan, Bin Laden, and funded by the Saudi Arabians. They used it against uh, Gaddafi, who was also a secular Arab government in uh, uh, in Libya. They're using it uh, in Syria now to uh, make trouble, to wreck, to destroy. Uh, so the Al-Qaeda people in Syria have said, when we take over, we're going to kill all the Alawites. That's the small, uh, very unusual Muslim sect that is most of the governing people in Syria. We're gonna drive out all the Christians. It's already happened in Iraq. These are countries that have had Christian communities from the time of the apostles. And they're, going to, they're being destroyed and driven out. And then they said, you know, so they're going to just have a, an Islamic state. So and they think the we're US so dumb. That? Exactly. That's trouble. Well, trouble. yeah, I mean, they think we're so dumb. They want to grope my wife and children to fly while they publicly run Al Qaeda. And it turns out the bombers were watched for five years, the supposed convicted bombers already, uh, who, who they said confessed the one when he's in the hospital with no proof, overthrowing the Sixth Amendment. I, I mean, Lou, it's crazy that that they're saying, give your rights up because of Al-Qaeda, while well, our government, I've said Obama is the global head of Al-Qaeda right now. Well, you know, they, they find, unfortunately, American people will buy the most unbelievably stupid and low-level propaganda. I mean, you know, the, all, all the arguments they're making against Iran, which are all lies, are exactly the same thing they said against Iraq. They just changed the word uh, Iraq to Iran. And, you know, apparently most people believe it. However, even though they're not being directly taxed for these wars, which would be the normal cause of, of a war weariness, because of course everything's being printed up at the Fed, still I think more and more Americans are tired of the wars, they'd like to get out of Afghanistan, and they don't want to go into Iran. 
So the more that we can, we can stoke these feelings, the more that we can uh, promote the cause of peace and Ron Paul's new Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity is, is going to be a big factor in this. The more we can uh, promote the cause of peace, the more trouble they're going to have. The more trouble they're going to have with, you know, again, uh, Syria, maybe poor Syria is out, is gone, but with Iran and with uh, other countries they'd like to target. So we have to promote sure. the cause of peace. Sure. I mean, what about, uh, what about re resisting in a peaceful way, civil disobedience? I mean, I think it's time to go into the airports with big printouts admitting that our government runs al-Qaeda and saying, how dare them want to grope us and violate our rights? It's an act of domination. They're flipping the Al-Qaeda script onto libertarians now, saying we're the threat. How dare you, the government that runs Al-Qaeda, then say you want to grope me looking for Al-Qaeda when you have the history of running these groups? I mean, I mean, that's what I'm getting at here, is I'm, I want to call them on their hoax, call them on their baloney. Well, I'm, I certainly believe in the principle of civil disobedience. We all have that right. I wouldn't actually tell anybody to do it because, of course, you're, you uh, take a chance of going to jail. And the jails are, uh, you know, the U.S., as I pointed out earlier, is the capital of a jailery in the entire planet. And uh, these are vicious, uh, vicious um, uh, cages that they put human beings in. So I would never tell anybody to do that because of what the consequences are. But I certainly would support... Uh, anybody taking their uh, their own rights into their hand and practicing civil disobedience, we have that right. I hear you. By the way, Adam Kokesh, frequent guest of this show, it's on worldnetdaily.com, linked up on drudgereport.com. Guys, blurb WorldNet Daily. Get it posted on infowars.com. He's doing what everybody's always asked me to do. He says he's going to lead an armed march on D.C. July 4th. And I'm going to tell you why I've always been against that when we come back. Stay with us. Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Sources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will make 
email you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping, with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at Infowars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson, the trusted name in precious metals. All right, CNS News is reporting radio host to lead armed march on D.C. July 4th to put government on notice that we won't be intimidated. Now, I know Adam Kakesh. I think he's overall a good guy. Um... But, you know, he does stunts like, you know, smoking pot on the air and stuff, which I get that's his right to do it, but it just kind of turns into party time. And I'm not criticizing him. He's been mildly critical of me in the past. I really could care less. But well, I'm going to call him. I'm going to try to get him on next hour. Or if anybody can get a hold of him, we've just got his cell phone number and Skype. Tell Adam I want to get him to pop in. I have been asked to do this over and over and over again in my 18 years on air. And there were people that did this back in the mid-90s, claimed they would, and it turned out it was basically a Fed running it, and it was a way to try to radicalize. I don't think Adam's doing that. It's a libertarian deal to open carry. And now that I've had a chance to read the article, they plan to march from, uh, from the Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia to the bridge. And then when the Feds stop them, if they stop them, then they'll turn back. So, I mean, I guess it's a publicity stunt for the Second Amendment to point out that you can't have guns in the Capitol. So I guess, I mean, my point is I've never done it because this is the type of time that they would provocateur and, 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 and send in somebody to stage something and then blame us. If you're aware of that and have cameras showing that, it could backfire on the globalist. It's just I haven't ever done this, even though, sure, it put my name all over TV, bigger than Piers Morgan, bigger than you know, all the rest of it. But I, I, I personally just have a bad feeling about it. Lou Rockwell, what is your feeling about this? Oh, I think it's a, it's a very bad idea. First of all, I just think that violence or the threat of violence, that's the government. That's not us. We're the people of peace. Yes, we have the right to self-defense, but not the right to offense. So I think also they're going to be, this is going to be the 4th of July. There are going to be a lot of uh, civilians around there, as they might call them, uh, who potentially collateral damage if there's any shooting. Um, quote unquote collateral damage, we would call that manslaughter or, or murder. So I think this is a very bad idea. I don't, you know, it must have made the FBI's day to see this happen. I mean, this is, I, I think and hope, however, nobody will be stupid enough to do it because they're just playing into the government's hands, playing into the media's hands. And by the way, this is not a libertarian thing. Uh, this is, you know, conservatives could be in back of it. Any, anybody, uh, who's interested in the, uh, you know, in the sort of things that Adam is interested in? It's not necessary. I want to <laughs> want to reject the libertarian label for this. It's a very bad idea, but I really think it'll never happen. I think this. I think we've seen the extent of it. Why would somebody? Why would somebody join in this? You know, if we think of, you know, the, the worst jails in the country outside of Guantanamo uh, are in the D.C. area. You know, folks, you don't want to let them put you in one of those jails. I mean, it's a horrific experience. Uh, it it's, can change your life for the worse. Um, and we shouldn't be taking, you know, you don't take up, our, it's just a very, very bad idea. Um, and I hope to goodness it never comes off. And my guess is it will never come off. And as you say, it it's, gets a lot of publicity. Of course, Drudge put it up. It's now all over the world and being described as a libertarian effort. This is not a libertarian effort. Uh, this is uh, um, something else. And I think we ought not to uh, support it, join in it, or approve of it in any way. Well, Lou, I mean, I've got to say this. I think when people like go to state capitals with guns or when I storm the capitol without guns, it shows we're in power. They called it storming it. We just didn't ask permission to go have a protest. I don't get permits because it's, 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 it's turning well, a right. That's, that's another thing, but you're not bringing, you know, a thousand people with rifles to the state capitol. No, no, listen, I, I, absolutely. I totally hear what you're saying. I hear that you're saying they can manipulate it. What I'm saying is I understand the libertarian right and the open carry movement is something that shows people that guns aren't illegal. A, a right sure. not exercised is a right that's lost. I'm going to do five more minutes with you on Ron Paul. After Lou Rockwell leaves us and Adam Kokesh leaves us, we're connected to him on Skype right now. Uh, I'll have time to play Ron Paul from Chile. Basically, you know, talking about how this could be the collapse of society. 
uh, and how government is basically destroying our society. Uh, similar things were also said uh, by the leader of uh, UKIP, N Nigel Farage, but Ron Paul and Jim Rogers on government, quote, they'll use force and they'll use intimidation. And, and you know, I think the good news here is whether it's Lou Rockwell, Alex Jones, Ron Paul, Nigel Farage, uh, Rogers, people that are into liberty worldwide, this is popular. And it's very, very exciting that liberty is rising while tyranny is becoming so unpopular. And I think that's why Lou Rockwell, in closing, I want to get your take on this, why we see them saying, of course the state did everything. Of course the state owns your kids. Of course the state made the sun come up this morning. I think they're trying to hide their behavior in plain view as some desperate attempt at normalcy bias. Do you think that's working? No, it's not working. And again, I think Ron Paul is the, is the key reason he's got a worldwide movement, not, not only among young people and, and uh, us older people in this country too, but all over the world. And he's doing, you know, all the the, very, the usual suspects said, oh, well, he's retired. Thank goodness now he's gone. Forget him. But, of course, he's stepped up everything he's doing and uh, what he believes in that is fighting against the Federal Reserve, fighting against big government, uh, uh, fighting for our liberties, fighting for the cause of peace and against, against war. His new, again, his new Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity, his podcasts, uh, the many, many speeches. He is so in demand on college campuses all over this country. Two and three times a week, he's speaking at college campuses. It doesn't get publicity, but he's influencing young people. And he's got even more exciting plans that haven't been announced yet uh, that are going to be a, a worldwide bombshell for, for goodness. So, Ron Paul, keep doing it. And those who are interested in Ron and all the others, Alex and everybody else who's part of this liberty movement, uh, we are on the march. The other side is sick. It's sick in every sense. It's decaying. And uh, I don't believe they have the stamina to stick with it. Uh, we have the young on our side. Have hope learn about what's going on sure. and be a uh, be a moral warrior for peace and freedom and um, All right. don't march on Washington with a gun. Well, I, l listen, uh, we're going to have Adam Kakesh up next. So what do you want, because I'll, I'll, I will pose the question or statement to him, what do you want to say to Adam Kokesh about his plan for an armed wa uh, march on Washington? Well, Adam's, you know, a very smart guy. He's an interesting guy. But I would say have a peaceful march if he wants to gather people on the 4th of July to talk about gun rights or whatever, um, you know, more power to him. But to um, give, to sort of give the FBI and the CIA and all of the Department of Homeland Security and the rest of these evil agencies a present on the 4th of July, uh, I think is not a good idea. And, and, and again, why do you think it's a, a, a bad idea? Uh, because there are a lot of open carry rallies out there that have reestablish the Second Amendment, and, and I agree with that, but I also just have your concern, not about Kokesh. Well, you got to stay, you got to stay away from Mordor. Washington, <laughs> D.C. is the, is the locus of evil. It's not like a regular city. This is very bad people there. Stay away from Washington, D.C. If you want to do it elsewhere in the country, uh, you know, where we have uh, open carry rights and so forth, well, okay, fine, do it. And these are, you know, peaceful and nobody's looking to shoot the state legislators or whatever. But you know what they will, you know what they will say in Washington. They'll say this is, you know, aimed at overthrowing the government. And these people are, you know, potentially guilty of treason. They'll all be arrested. They'll be brutalized. And the media will use this to say, look, all those libertarians, they want to, you know, they want to shoot the government. So that is what's going to happen, even though we don't want to shoot the government. All we right. do know that that is the government's weapon. The government shoots us. But we're, right. you know, we use the weapons of peace and of intelligence and of uh, knowledge against them. All right, Lou Rockwell, thank you for joining us. LouRockwell.com. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.